Ah, ça change, ça le change. So, hello everybody. Welcome to the series of presentations on the topic of improving your uh, daily collective. Uh, my name is Danny Plourd uh, uh, with Innovation with Eva Do, and so I will be the moderator for the first conference, uh, which is uh, who is the genie in the vertical agricultural enclosure. So before presenting our conference speaker, here is some information on the conference. Uh, so first of all, the presentation will be followed by a period of questions and we'll be able to you'll be able to ask your questions uh, along uh, the uh, conference and so uh, at the bottom you have a tab of for questions and so not in the chat but really in the tab uh, at the bottom with uh, and I, I invite you to vote also for the questions if those the questions that you're more interested in we're going to prioritize uh, the questions uh, that uh, uh, raise more interest for the participants and then the presentations are all recorded but if you want to have access to the uh, uh to in a postponed uh, uh, we'll I will ask you uh, to have appreciation survey at the end in order to have access to all the conferences and so I'm very happy now to introduce uh, uh, Mrs. Marie-Josée uh, Montpetit. She's an engineer with the uh, Femme Diver and she's a passion of technology and she will talk about the uh, innovating projects of uh, vertical agriculture. So Marie-Josée, welcome to... Well, thank you very much. And I imagine we're going to see the presentation on the screen. And so thank you for Yves Ado for inviting me for this opportunity to participate. And also, I would, well, I hope that in the coming 20 minutes, I will be able to say who was uh, the genie in the vertical agriculture enclosure. And I hope to convince you that this genie is uh, connected. This genie is uh, multidisciplinary and also intelligent. For sure, uh, these this project uh, are not uh, done uh, alone in isolation. We, we were able to have considerable uh, grants uh, from the uh, Sustainable Development Technology Canada, and I think uh, Mrs. Uh, Adriana is online, so thank you. Also, our uh, intern, uh, uh, she is uh, from HEC uh, Montreal, Maximilien Godet, and so essential for the project, and also all the other members of the team of Femme Diver, without which there would not be any company and would not we would not have a project. And so what I would like to do today is, uh, first of all, to convince you of this uh, multidisciplinary is to say who is a winter farm or for Femme Diver, what is the philosophy, the philosophy be behind the production and who led to the project uh, which is a uh, uh, grant uh, which is called by Servo or Brain and so I'm a passionate of technology and I'll talk about it uh, and also to see what is the future. So uh, Winter Farm is a uh, is a, a startup, a Quebec startup uh, that was started in 1998 and is in a full expansion and uh, and, and so we're also developing a, a session, a unique session in a, a vertical agriculture for any reason, because there are strawberries. For, it's not like lettuce and like many other uh, productions. And also an industri on an industrial scale, because uh, vertical agriculture is to pile up uh, many productions uh, in our, in our or, uh, gutters, for example, for us. And in general, it's uh, also for uh, for us, it's for strawberries, uh, and also on a large scale. And the objective uh, to this is to offer uh, fresh uh, fruits and vegetables, uh, uh, which are also a local, affordable and local uh, fruits and vegetables during the cold season. So it's a controlled uh, uh, environment. Uh, it's uh, and which is climatized and and we can control completely uh, the environment all year round. And so. In order to, uh, to achieve uh, these goals, it's multidisciplinary from the start, because in order to do this type of production, we need the knowledge, uh, uh, traditional market gardening knowledge, and we need the principles of uh, agriculture 4.0, which are called, uh, which is an agriculture, which is a uh, measure, we have sensors, and also artificial intelligence in order to combine all this knowledge together and 
in order to do a richer action uh, within the farm and in order to maximize their production and reduce uh, the environmental effects and also to improve uh, production and revenue for uh, producers and distributors and the company. So, what is the solution? So, as you can see here at the bottom, uh, to the uh, left, uh, we see the different uh, rows of strawberries uh, piled up, uh, and you can see that there's an associated uh, greenhouse. One of the uh, main uh, critiques uh, that we do, uh, that we uh, address uh, with the controlled environment, uh, is that this requests a lot of uh, uh, dissipation of, uh, of uh, heat and we use light to do that. The idea of uh, winter farms is to use this heat in order to uh, to heat another uh, traditional greenhouse, uh, which is adjacent. And so now it is heated with the heat that comes from the lights. We're able to heat this uh, this uh, greenhouse with the exceeding heat of the other room. And so this is a winning solution for Ferme d'Hiver and also for the producer who wishes to heat their greenhouse with a more affordable cost and also uh, ecological cost. The philosophy of uh, for Ferme d'Hiver, uh, for me, for, for for me and other uh, research centers, uh, the idea here is to do a user center a centric design in a concept of what we call a living lab, and so laboratory, a living laboratory, which are not uh, controlled but which uh, represent uh, the different uh, production units. It's normal. It's less normal to do it in agriculture, but in agriculture, our client, uh, uh, our strawberries, for us, it's not a user that we want to interview. So we have to capture of the strawberry through different measures and data, but also with the acquisition of knowledge of experts. And from this to generate systems which not only of knowledge, but of decision also. And this has led to the development of Salvo or brain. So this means many things, but especially it means uh, for us uh, the development of the interface, uh, machine interface and uh, machine room. So cerveau in French, brain, uh, we want to, de to define this ideal growth uh, for the plant to make and also for the environment. So in order to maximize the quality of the fruits, the savor, and also the yield uh, per uh, plant in relation to energy consumption, but also to, uh, this is based on three main axes. I mentioned it. First of all, the uh, the know-how market gardening and uh, agronomic and know-how, the building engineer, because we want to uh, recuperate, uh, to re recover the heat uh, so that the environment is controlled within the, the room, but also the information technologies uh, to I'll talk about this a little bit more and we are, where we arrive with this. Uh, uh, we arrive at the data with this and the participation. So Cervo is our, our automation system of uh, project production based on AI and it's uh, uh, granted. Uh, as, so we have different sites of production and this exists. They're connected to greenhouse and we do the distribution. And as I mentioned, the plants, uh, they don't talk and so we have to talk to them through agronomists or sensors. And so all this data, the temperature, it could be the color, it could be humidity, are accumulated. But for us, it's not enough. We want to make the decision. So we need to treat this data. We need to add, uh, we have to cor correlate the, this data. Some are maybe very important that we measure together. Maybe some are less. So this is what we're doing right now regarding the science of data. And this it, data, improved data, becomes for important measures what I call information and also knowledge. And we use this in order to generate uh, uh, twin twins, uh, uh, digital twins, because uh, this is a representation, a mathematical representation or digital representation of our biophysical system of the plant and the room. We do this for many reasons. 
amongst other things, because we live in a multi-lab uh, world and it's a world of production and so we cannot do the algorithm test or decision uh, through a, a system which produces we want to avoid doing uh, production interruptions and to uh, to uh, we also there's another reason we we have physical systems which take some time so our digital twin will allow us to to question, ask questions to the plant and to the greenhouse to have answers very quickly so we don't need to wait. Of course, the digital twin is not the end per se. What we want to do is one, we want a feedback through the production. And what's wonderful is the production site will give us data that we will treat and we'll be able to compare with our digital twin and to see to what extent we're consistent. And the main goal for this, so the final goal, as you can see here at the top of the uh, of the slide, is that we're going to have many sites with this intelligence, and this intelligence will allow us uh, with the data from the consumers and the and the uh, procurement uh, uh, planification change to control at what level we want to go with the production and also with the treatment of data which will allow us again to control better the production so uh, really uh, to finalize uh, this and so we want to with this to have more productive farms more ecological and i'm talking in, that we're in an internal and control environment so we can control the consumption of water that's very interesting we don't use uh, chemical pesticides uh, so eating strawberries is probably uh, the, uh, the, the where we have most pesticides the pesticides on the market and so this becomes a very profitable for us and the producers and so we come back to the multidisciplinary and so i talked about this a little bit at the preceding slide we have the site production sites we have the digital twins we have into artificial intelligence and data science and so salvo or brain is multidisciplinary starting from the concept to the implementation and so we generate uh, knowledge, uh, the market uh, gardeners, the agronomists, uh, and also with sensors and probes, we also have a lot of modeling. And so the digital twins are our models uh, for a biophysical aspect. And also we have building science in order to measure to what extent the economy of uh, energy is important. We also have uh, uh, plant science uh, to see how plants interact with the environment, but also how uh, the environment interacts. With them. And we go towards uh, decision making. Uh, so we have a, a decision tree, which is very uh, simple through uh, reinforcement uh, and machine uh, reinforcement and uh, learning. And because we have many systems and many farms, we're able now to think about doing uh, federated learning. So the different sites of production become uh, neurons and can learn together. So now technologies. So the objectives here of a salvo or brain is uh, simple, so automation. Rec uh, recovering energy and, and uh, production optimization. One problem that we have with automation in the farms is that many of the current systems, well, we call them vertical uh, agriculture, but they're integrated vertically, so all the sensors are talk directly to the uh, cloud. But it's not interesting if we want to make decision making. We have to start with a more integrated system horizontally. So that systems can talk to each other without always having to go through uh, the cloud. And so also the energy recovery, I talked about this, uh, the, the heating of, uh, green of the uh, greenhouses uh, through the lighting. And so basically we have a more efficiency, energy efficiency per ton produced. And also because in Quebec we have uh, many levels of uh, uh, rates, electricity rates, and also the optimize, optimization of yields. Uh, so if we do automation, we can recover energy and also we can optimize uh, the, the yield because we we're doing a really uh, uh, finalizing of all the parameters and this allows also to eliminate a lot of risks and uh, diseases uh, which are uh, linked to the environment so because we can control 
the environment much better. And so this is the, there's a slide, this slide has a lot of information. And so what is important to see here is that it's simple, but at the same time, complicated. You can see that there are many production sites. So there's one to completely to the left and completely to the right. And there's many subsystems. And the goal here is to have a main orchestration between these systems. The way that I said that I explained is that each system is like a musical instrument that plays alone, and but we would like to have these instruments in a symphony. And so we're going to integrate the different uh, data sources. We want to do a functional decomposition between uh, what we call the edge and the cloud, and also this uh, idea of federated learning, so to distribute not only automation, but also the decisions and that the system the site that can help another site to make their decisions and eventually to be able to exchange intelligence and pieces of chunks of intelligence of the neurons of which to exchange information. Of course, uh, we talked about uh, modeling and so the uh, digital twins, uh, uh, thermodynamic models, and also I'm going to mention it, we do a lot of uh, work uh, with uh, technology transfers because we have a lot of these concepts and also the federated learning. This, this is still at the level of research and so we're working with people. Uh, we need to work with people at the professional level. Uh, 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 of course, in 2022, we have software and uh, we want to have uh, open source models if possible. Uh, we're not, uh, we're just users of uh, software, we're not merchants. And also we want standardized tools and languages uh, in order to do our developments. And, and because the users, the potential users of the, the producers and our researchers, sometimes they need uh, graphic interfaces. And of course, in 2022, one of the ways that to visualize data is uh, to do graphics. I mentioned that we had uh, partnerships, which are strategically important, and the partnerships are also uh, is multidisciplinary because we have uh, industrial partners in Nevada, which is our our uh, climate uh, climatization. Uh, uh, vendor and also Hydro Quebec uh, from the beginning because again not only in Quebec uh, the electricity rates are, are good but uh, Hydro Quebec is, in, is uh, interested in uh, the electrification of agricultural systems and also we have important partners at the level of universities with the University of Montreal I mentioned uh, with the digital twins and also HEC Montreal with data and also with ETS, they do a lot of our modeling, thermal modeling, and also that will participate in the development of the uh, digital twins. And lately with the uh, Université Laval, which was also interested in environmental modeling, but also they bring an important uh, uh, component at the uh, agronomy level that will be under study. And because of other, uh, also we're affiliated with other uh, affiliations, uh, other universities in Canada and France, so we have our advisors. We can think about uh, Google, which has a, a representation in Montreal and in California, and also, and the DeepMind, of, well, that's Google Montreal, and then M32 Connect, which is a company which does uh, data management in Montreal. And I and I put this uh, uh, to the right of uh, the last, uh, but not the least, uh, Evado, which really supported us and allowed us uh, to have a lot of any students uh, uh, with the uh, NG and DAC, so that right now they're in face-to-face -to, -face, uh, to lead this project. And so what is the future? The future is a network uh, interconnected and intelligent uh, winter farm network. And so this is a it's, it's this interconnected uh, intelligent network which allow will allow to use uh, inter artificial intelligence as a uh, multidisciplinary tool in order to reduce uh, uh, strawberry uh, imports 
and in general that come from the U.S. and Mexico, and also to aim for a production of 13 million kilos of strawberries per year in the five coming years. And also, I would like it to export this know-how in vertical agriculture. This is what we're going to do uh, with the students who are coming. And I think that it's Femme um, Duval, but I think I could add also that it's me, and I hope that this project will be able to demonstrate that this uh, multidisciplinary approach uh, we, uh, is very precious, important for us, uh, and combines uh, agriculture, engineering, and artificial intelligence. And, and this uh, maximizes the impacts altogether. They're not separated. And this will be able to contribute to improving the food autonomy of Quebec, of Canada, and, 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 as, and as I said to a friend in Africa recently, for the rest of the world. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very wonderful. Thank you, Marie-Joseph, for the excellent presentation, very passionate presentation. So we want to remind you that you can ask questions now. So in the uh, tab at the bottom, questions. Well, so we have a few uh, minutes uh, to answer the first question for you, Marie-Josée. What is the main uh, challenge that you face uh, in order to, to go from one model to a more a larger scale that you mentioned the uh, different types of uh, production? So what is the, 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 the challenge is the data. I call this uh, the, the, the Tower of Babel of uh, data. Uh, I, I stop now. I'm just going to refresh. We'll wait, uh, Marie Jose, a few seconds uh, before she uh, to reconnect her herself. Okay. So, as I was saying, the data, because. I call this the Tower of Babel of uh, data, the systems, as I mentioned, the integrate, the integral vertical integration. So people uh, think uh, they, they, yeah, they say, yes, I call it uh, S2223, and for them it means something. But in a system where we want to interpret uh, what sensor and what and the results, we don't have any idea. And so I didn't mention it, but we're looking also at uh, the, the the use of uh, semantic networks in order to cement the data one to the other, so that they can be un understandable, comprehensible outside of the of the data uh, capturing silos. Thank you, Marie Josée. A second question. So you mentioned the development of uh, twin, uh, digital twins in Ferme du Val. Is there an additional uh, challenge uh, to develop uh, digital twins uh, for modeling in a context, uh, in an uh, agronomic uh, context where we work with the living? Uh, yes, uh, we have uh, the opportunity. Can you hear me? Because uh, it stopped again. Okay, so we have the opportunity to have the project uh, with the Department of uh, of uh, in research of Montreal, and we have started to develop uh, the digital twin. And what we realize is that we'll have to capture the knowledge of the experts, not just the data, but also, I think, with interpretation of text and interpretation of uh, recordings, uh, because we need this. And the challenge will be to correlate uh, knowledge of the experts with the data proceed. And so that will, will be a, 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 a wonderful challenge. And I think the first meetings that we have will be able to achieve this, but yes, for sure, this is where we need to do a lot of work. And so we go back to the data. It's not the models. I don't think that that is the, the main problem. The models exist. And also, I think, uh, I hope you're there, but we discussed the, uh, well, it's, these are not the black uh, boxes, it's gray boxes. So we need to know what is inside the box. So the genie is not unknown. We have to see who the genie is and what the genie wants to do and will do. And so we'll continue with another question uh, regarding uh, the uh, federated uh, learning, what you mentioned uh, in the presentation. It's not well, not used very much in agriculture at this time. What are the main challenges? Uh, what are the and what are the, the benefits? Well, I think 
there are two things. So first of all, the agricultural system for even 4.0, they're done per site. And so I have a farm, okay, I'm going to buy something to do my automation and okay, that's finished. Done. But there's also the fact that the systems are developed vertically. And so my, my irrigation system, they call it, it talks to the cloud, not to my climate, uh, climate system. And so that's the first, uh, the first issue. But also what we have, which is super and probably were this, the only ones uh, in this mode with the people who are doing autonomic, uh, autonomy systems in transportation and manufacturing is that we have many sites. And so we can think now, not just one thing, at, not one site at a time, but many sites. And this is uh, the connected lessons where we can start to think that the knowledge that comes from one site can influence the knowledge of another site and they can help them. And so I would even say that people like me that come uh, with the networking, work in networking and the internet of objects, it can be very interesting to exchange the capacities between the systems. So maybe we don't need to put all the complexity to each uh, farm. Maybe we could uh, start uh, sharing uh, the capacities between the different sites and to uh, have them learn amongst themselves and eventually to have them talk amongst themselves with the management of production, which one do we want to encourage, promote, uh, which one we would like to increase maybe the production for a certain period of time. And so this idea of uh, having communication amongst them, it's not used now because people are not thinking about them as a neurons of a brain. They think about it as uh, one system at a time, but we want to system, think about it as neurons of a brain. Great neurons. We might have time for a last question uh, regarding funding, financing. We talked about ministries, uh, ONGs, uh, TPDC. We work with uh, the, the, the HEC, University of Montreal. And so, was it easy for you to go and get the funding in order to support the uh, innovating solution in many ways and not necessarily in one? Uh, the specific activity. So how do we do to fund all this? Okay, well, the uh, company, I won't talk about it because this is uh, not really my sphere, but I would say that the T TDDC project, it was very important because it was uh, mobilizing and the amount was very uh, was uh, important. And this allowed it to uh, think about uh, what uh, will happen. Uh, everywhere. We were very uh, lucky to have you also because you opened us a lot of uh, doors. But I think that what is nice with this project is that, well, I spent a lot of time with the uh, Media Lab. Is what they do is multidisciplinarity. It's good to go out of your own world. I do networking, but I'd never uh, did the strawberries. People who do strawberries, who produce strawberries, maybe they never did the data capturing. And it's good to go out of our world and to say, okay, we're going to ask questions and what to challenge ourselves. What do we need in order to make a difference? And I think, I think uh, this is generates a passion, generates uh, another, I think it generates uh, another mentality. And this morning I was listening, there was a, a meeting where Mr. Serrois, uh, which is the uh, chief innovator of Quebec, they said that that was his passion for innovation. And I think that multidisciplinary project, this is what they do, they generate passion. Yes, very well, very good. So I was very passionate also to listen to you of uh, talking about Spence uh, Bayer, with the farm and the engineer uh, with the film, uh, with the film du Bayer. So uh, we are anticipating uh, tasting your strawberries. And so thank you for participants. And I want to remind you that you will receive a survey at the end of this day. And so you'll be able to access to all the content uh, once the survey com uh, terminated, com uh, completed. And so please uh, stay online. Uh, we're going to continue with another conference of Jean-François Lalonde from Laval University concerning a uh, project of uh, uh, putting together artificial intelligence and medicine for the benefit of human beings. So, so we'll come back just a little while. Thank you very much, everybody.